Hello, it's Coach Nancy from The Watering Mouth. I am a life coach and weight loss coach as well as recipe developer here at The Watering Mouth. Today I have another set of recipes for you in the What I Eat in a Day to Lose Weight series. We do one of these usually every month. So this month, the What I Eat in a Day set comes from a past challenge, a 21 day eat to live challenge. And the recipes are available to you by going to thewateringmouth.com slash cheat sheets and signing up there for access to past cheat sheets, this cheat sheet, and any of the ones in the future. We put tips and tricks and ideas and links on those um, cheat sheets as well as recipes. So go there and um, enjoy this video. Today we've put together a recipe set from a 21 day eat to live challenge. These recipes received some big love so we wanted to share them with you. These challenges are helping folks learn how to incorporate Dr. Furman's G-bombs in a day's eating. Those greens, beans, onions, mushrooms that are cooked, berries, seeds, and nuts make up the G-bombs. Our breakfast consists of some greens, and seeds, and sweet, smooth, sweet fruit. Smoothies are such a tasty way to get more greens in your diet. Now, smoothies sometimes get a bad rap, and that's the fruit, all fruit smoothies. Yeah, that's way too much sugar to have at one time. But the way we make smoothies with all these greens, it helps you to curb cravings because greens contain phytochemicals that, that do that for your body. They help you to curb cravings. They don't take you on a sugar crash. They help to even out um, your blood sugar too. So eat more greens, get them in at every meal. A pear pecan smoothie is what we're having for breakfast. Now this can be enjoyed cold, like a highly nutritious shake or served slightly warmed to start your day in a tummy warming way. We start the smoothie with collards. We'll strip the leaves from the tough skin stems because sometimes those can be a little bitter. We'll save those stems in our freezer bag of veggie scraps for a future veggie broth, which we're going to show you how to do in just a minute. We'll add a medium zucchini cut up an organic pear. So we'll use it unpeeled um, since it is organic. Otherwise we'd peel it. Now we'll add a cup of soy milk. We made this from a powder, so it's kind of thick on the bottom where the powder settled. A frozen banana, pecans, ground flaxseed, cinnamon, and a dash of cardamom. So I'll use a half, about a half a cup of water to clean out the bottom of the measuring cup so we get all of the goodness out. We'll whirl the whole thing and we have about 40 ounces of smoothie. Now, of course, yours can vary according to how much um, liquid you end up putting in yours. You can make it thicker or thinner, but this is about 40 ounces. So we could drink a quart of smoothie for breakfast, and which is still a lot, and save the rest for after you eat dinner if you desire. Veggie and fruit smoothies are a fabulous way to fill our tummies and get the day started in a highly nutritious way. On to lunch. Now this lunch takes a little prep. Um, because the base of our white vegetable soup is a vegetable broth, we've put together a homemade veggie broth ahead of time, and I'm going to show you here how to put it together so you wouldn't be doing this as you know in your day as you're preparing. And I'll, I'll make a note too that the way we do the recipes in the challenge, there's a rolling prep. If you've heard Sherry talk about that concept, where we're prepping a little bit each day so we don't have everything to do the day that we eat the food. Um, so we've, we've, we got you uh, um, in the, the challenges. We'll make it easy for you. All right, so we're gonna, the homemade veggie broths take a little time and effort to put together. Um, but what's wonderful about using a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to put it together is that there's no oil or salt or anything that you don't want in your um, broth added. And sometimes a store-bought veggie broth has predominantly carrot flavor or a predominantly onion flavor or just a flavor that doesn't work for you. So this is a way you can control 
how it's going to taste. It's very economical because you're using scraps that would be thrown away otherwise or composted. Um, so we've collected scraps in the freezer for a week or so and we dump all those in the pot. I mean you can just keep a bag in the freezer so that you're collecting scraps all the time. So when you have enough, dump it in the pot. You can add uh, er herbs and spices if you wish, but you may just want veggies for a blank slate, so to speak. Sometimes if you add spices ahead of time and you end up using the um, veggie broth for something that, you know, it just depends on what you're using the broth for as far as what the spices that you may want in it. So having said all that, make a simple blank slate of just the veggie broth, just the veggies and water, and you can add the spices when you're making your final dish. That might be the best way to go. All right, we show you how to make this in an electric pressure cooker, but you can totally make this in a big stock pot on the stove. We add water to cover the veggies, so it's just the veggies, whatever scraps you have available, and water, and we're gonna cook it in the pressure cooker for 20 minutes or so. Um, you can cook it on the stove for hours. The longer you cook it, the more concentrated the flavors are. So this is a very forgiving thing. It's not an exact science. If you want more information, you can always Google vegetable broths and you know find out um, recipes if you want to, but I pretty much wing it <laughs> um, when I'm making mine. So the veggie broth is cooled and now we're gonna strain it. We'll put the broth back in the pressure cookers as we'll cook the soup in it. Now come the goodies for the soup. Thinly sliced sweet onion, chopped mushrooms, a bag of thinly sliced green cabbage, canned northern beans that have been rinsed, and a bit of Mrs. Dash. We added a little extra broth too. Didn't quite have enough. We set the pressure cooker for 15 minutes on the manual setting and lunch will be ready in about 40 minutes or so. When you set the the time on a the electric pressure cooker it takes a little time to get up to pressure and then to release so that you can actually use your um your broth so it takes about 40 minutes for or use your soup so it takes about 40 minutes for this to be finished this recipe makes a lot of soup so feel free to freeze any leftovers to serve the soup, we ladle up some and now it's ready for topping. We're gonna to whisk some water, lemon juice, and tahini together and dollop that on top and sprinkle with paprika for a little color. You could easily throw on some nutritional yeast if you wanted to, up to you. So lunch is served. We'll enjoy a cup of fresh blackberries to get our berries in for the day as we finish up this lunch. So dinner has a little prep work too. We'll prepare three portobello mushrooms. We show prepping them, leaving the gills on, and also scraping them out. Totally your preference, just showing you both ways. We'll chop these and place them in a gallon baggie. The marinade ingredients go in. Coconut aminos, water, balsamic vinegar, granulated garlic and onion. Now close the bag and toss the shrooms around a bit. We'll lay this bag flat in the refrigerator for maximum absorption of the marinade. You can do this in 20 minutes, they can marinate for a short amount of time or they can marinate overnight. Again, when you're doing a challenge with these recipes, we have it all laid out for you so you know exactly how much time you need to allow for this. Now to prep the veggies, we'll slice the red onion and we have chopped yellow sweet pepper, chopped broccoli. Notice we're including the leaves that were part of the bunch. You don't have to throw that broccoli, those broccoli leaves out, use them up. The last thing to prep is some Japanese sweet potatoes. These were hanging around in the fridge. We'd roasted them a few days ago. We're just gonna peel and chop them to get ready to put on top of the veggies once they're cooked, as these only need to heat through. So while our skillet heats up, we'll prep the baby greens that will serve as a bed for the stir fry. Finally, chopping the greens makes them easier to eat. You can do that or you can leave them, you know, larger pieces, whatever. Personally, I like them chopped small. These will be raw, but you can totally steam these lightly if you desire. But this is gonna make a bed for our stir fry. So we'll spoon a third of the mixture on top of the greens and we'll save the rest because the stir fry made three servings. 
We'll sprinkle some raw sesame seeds on top and dinner is served. You got a whole day of nutritarian eating under your belt now. All right, what'd you think of those recipes? They look like some good ones. You wanna try them? Be sure to go to www.thewateringmouth slash cheat sheets and sign up so you can have the recipes. When you try this, um, try any of the recipes out, come back and comment below and let us know how they were, what you think. And um, maybe if you put some tweaks to it or if you have some thoughts about them, we'd love to hear those. So thanks for watching and see you next time.